Man, I gotta go close the door. Let me let me do this. Woo! See if we can get the viewership, get the viewership cracking, slacking. Oh, I got two cameras a day, boy. I'm like, oh shoot. Oh shoot. Hey, boy. <coughs> we warm it up. Hey man, turn that thing up. Think about that. <laughs> I don't want nobody blowing on me. <laughs> I don't want nothing. <laughs> don't be blowing. <laughs> don't be. <laughs> don't be blowing on me. <laughs> Hey, matter of fact, look at him. I don't be blowing on me, Joe. Matter of fact, come here. Nigga, come on. Hey, boy. Woo. I don't need nothing, boy. I don't need nothing. I don't need nothing, man. Oh, man. Woo! Can't be too safe. Can't be too safe. Longer than she changes. In one week. Mmm. That's what I'm talking about, bro. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm... Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. <laughs> good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Hey, I'm your host, Joaquin Thompson Sr. Coming to you live from... I'm in Mableton. I'm in Mabel. We right outside. We ain't in Little Burn. We ain't in Stone Mountain. We ain't in Snellville. We, we right. Wait a minute. <coughs> you right? <laughs> we right outside of Atlanta, man. And uh, just trying to, you know, make sure y'all, <coughs> y'all try, y'all playing, y'all practicing. Safe stuff, man. Because uh, I'm seeing a lot of stuff this week, man. It's crazy. It's crazy, bro. Because uh. I've been going out different places, man. Just, you know, the essential stuff, you know, getting to the um, the grocery store, getting back from the grocery store, that kind of stuff. But, uh, hey, bro, I ain't even hit y'all with the, hey, I got the dish gloves. I got, hey, bro, when I go out, I'm like that, bro. And I know it ain't safe. You know, the first time I hit my partner up, man, I, I went to um, check on this crib and uh, I showed up. Them dudes wanted it. Shake hands up. I'm like, hey man, I'm like this. I'm like, hey, hey. I was like, man, what? The <laughs> I'm like, nah, bro, this is real, man. I'm not look. I'm like this. You see me in the street? I'm like this, bro. So, um, just uh, you know, coming to you live, man. This is episode 147, and uh, want to thank everybody for joining. I'm doing something a little different, man. Couldn't get out to the studio. And uh, so I got my super producer. He on the, you know, ones and twos. Y'all could definitely still call in. 678-381-1973. Uh, 678-381-1973. We're going to be a little interactive tonight because uh, week before last, I had a guest on. I logged into, well, let me reverse. Because we might have some people joining for the first time. So if this is your first time joining the Daily Bread radio show, I want to thank you for joining. But I want to tell you a little bit about the show. Show is um, 147 episodes. We do personal finance from a spiritual perspective. We don't do religion. We don't do religion. So whatever your religion is, Buddha, Sikh, uh, Christianity, non-denominational, Pentecostal, and all the rest of them, right? We don't do that here. We only got one thing, and that's God. We don't do all that other. If you got something going on with all that other stuff, hey, so be it handling your business, 
But um, on our show, we don't do that here. We only do one thing, and that's God. So I uh, want to let people know about that. But every week, we're talking about personal finance. Every week since February 20th, 2017, every Thursday night, 8 to 9 p.m., that's all we're talking about is personal finance. And, um, you know, this whole thing with the coronavirus, the pandemic, it's just, uh, I mean, I got some topics, man, I'm going to hit tonight that I want to make, you know, want to make sure, man, look, if you ain't got one of these, man, go ahead and run off. Hey, go get you one of these, man. Don't, this ain't even, I don't even do this for entertainment, bro. I mean, because um, I really believe that I got a calling, you know, in my life just to spread the word about personal finance. Now, whether whether or not you take heed to it or you look at it like, man, it's a trip, you know, it's entertaining, it's a brother. And a, you know, one thing I am going to say, man, share it with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of people out there that um, right now, Right now tonight, man, they struggling, bro. They struggling, and I don't, I don't wish that on nobody. I'm talking about, you know, we already dealing with a pandemic. We all, we already dealing with something that's health related. So we're trying to stay protected, trying to stay protected. But um, at the same time, it's getting an equal amount of press. Is the economy and the economics of it? Now, the thing that I want you to understand is um, when it comes to our community, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a five layer bean dip. Right. Uh, for people that understand food, th this thing is like a five layer bean dip. So for people that have, haven't been to, you know, an office party or birthday gathering when somebody brought a five layer bean dip, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's this, it's this dish that's like, it has layers to it. I don't know how, what all goes in the I don't know what's all in it. Anyway, it's layers to it. And when you look at them, a lot of times when they do it, they'll have it in a glass dish so you can see the layers in the dip. And at the top, you know, usually you use some chips or something. But right now, our economy is like that. So when you think about, and not just African Americans, I'm talking about people, you know, middle income and lower. That's catching it. Bro, we at the bottom part of that bean dip, bro. We in the bottom part of that. So the thing that I'm saying is this. I I mean, I, I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about tonight, but the thing I want y'all to go away, man, put this in your conversation for this week. Give some thought. Give some thought to like where we are, where we are, how we got here, how we get out from here. I mean, just give it some thought and just because a lot of this stuff that's going down with the government, that's going down with, you know, the way they run in this stimulus. A lot of it, man, is just, I mean, to me, it's like fugazi. I'm not, now trust me, let me, let me, let me preface that by saying this. I appreciate all of y'all joining. Ganya, St. Parish, hey, my homeboy, got there, David Miles, my cousin, Ann. Angie, Angie baby, um, D Cali, my son. I mean, I mean, I appreciate all of y'all. So the night what I did last week, a couple weeks ago, I made a mistake. I was on personal, and then somebody was, man, I was looking for you on your business one. I said, okay, I'm gonna go to the business one. I went to the business one, and then it was so this week I said, you know what, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna be on both. Personal, business. So if you either way, if you were trying to catch me, like it's coming by the crib and I Bro, you, hey, no excuse this week. But um, anyway, just, I mean, just think, I just want y'all to get out some thought, man. How did we get here? How are we going to get out? Now, the one thing I'm going to say is this. I'm going to tell you something about this show that I believe wholeheartedly 110%. And um, you all, I mean, you could text, you could call in. Um, the number to the studio, 678 381-1973. You can put stuff in the chat. If you got something to say, let's be interactive. Um, but I'm going to say some things tonight, and I need your feedback. I want y'all to just, you know, say what's on your mind. I ain't, I ain't you know, I'm not going to be tripping about it. But um, first things first. First things first. I'm going to throw some numbers out at you, and I want you to just think. I want you to, 
I want you to think through this so that way when you're seeing it on the news and you're watching it and you're thinking about this three months from now, three years from now, because, I mean, I'm committed for a 1,000 shows, so I'm up to 147. So I got a little ways to go, but I'm up for the, I'm up for the task. I'm not tripping because I love what I do, love who I help, and um, I love the feedback that I get from the people. So um, first things first, two trillion. So let me, I mean... Let's think about that. Two trillion dollars is going to come into the, they're going to pump into the economy. You don't have to apply for it. They say, look, we know who you are. We know based on your tax returns. What if I ain't filed a tax return? That's cool too. We just need, hey, you can go on, fill out this little form, go to irs.gov, fill it out. irs.gov, let them know, hey, I haven't filed, but here's my bank account. Here's my, now you got to be careful. <laughs> let me <laughs> let me tell you something from experience. You got to be careful because it's kind of like the um, it's kind of like this uh, this uh, I guess you call it a, a trap. The way that they catch monkeys, right? Did you know the way that they catch monkeys is they put peanuts in this large coconut. They cut a hole out, put some peanuts in there, and the monkey sticks his hand in there, and grabs the peanuts. But he can't get his hand out, right? He won't let the peanuts go to get his hand out, and then he end up getting caught. So let me give you a little word, a little, little wisdom. If you haven't filed, if you think something, whatever, whatever, you think you're going to owe. And this is just my personal opinion, so let me give you that first. So I don't want nobody to be, oh, he's, bro, this is my personal opinion. I mean, you can take it for what it's worth, or you can say, man, go to the hills. But I'm going to tell you like this. You put your information in. You tell them, they say, hey, it ain't no problem. Then we'll know where to send it at. That's on you. But just know this. Just know this. You put your checking account in there. And after all of this is over, you end up owing some money. They can grab that. Just, I mean, just, this, this is the think through show, right? I mean, as people are getting prepared and they're navigating what I call the corona economics, just be weary of it. I mean, not to say, oh, don't be scared, but just be, you got to be a thinking person. Like, okay, I'm cool with that. But if you ain't got nothing going out, whatever, you file and you owe. I mean, I done filed an old. I ain't tripping about that. You know what I'm saying? Payment plan too. Yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm with it. So, but make sure that you put yourself in place to get the stimulus, right? So don't be, you know, don't be so conspiracy theory where you freeze and you, you leave the money on the table. Go on it, you know, like, hey, man, I ain't tripping. Here go my bank account. Or here's where I'm, you know, this is where to send it, whatever. But don't be no, you know, don't be so whatever and don't and miss out on the money. Leave the money on the table. So that's automatic money, right? It's supposed to be automatic. Everybody wait and see what happens. But here's the question for you. And y'all can put it in the chat. You know, I appreciate all y'all joining. Chuck, I see you. Angie Thomas, I see you. Tim Allen, man, you, where you... <laughs> gotta call me man you this is the second time i've seen you pop up on this show but uh, uh <laughs> but what you gotta do is <laughs> what you gotta do here's a question for you here's a question for you this is the first one we're gonna we're gonna tackle this we're gonna this is gonna be just like school we're gonna tackle this stepwise right so say you say in three weeks you get a check right from the u.s treasury Right, automatic. This is your stimulus, you know, Corona money. It's coming through. It's twelve hundred dollars. Oh, it's fifteen. I don't even know the number. It's some money that you wasn't expecting, right? So you get that money. You get your check. It comes to you. Bam. I mean, put it in the chat. My only question is this: What you gonna do with the money, Chris? Ho, hey, but, hey, team. I appreciate you, man. I need to call you anyway. Just to get back on your wavelength, man. Good to see you, bro. Good to see you. That's a good bro. Um, but what are y'all going to... I mean, that's what I'm saying. This is a thinking man show. This this show is for thinkers. What you going to do with the money? Like, what's your plan? Right? You got this money coming. It's going to come from the government. Whatever it is, however, whatever amount. What are you going to do with it? Like, have you given that some thought? Like, when my money come, when my money come, I'm buying them. I'm going to buy a Ferrari. <laughs> I, 
I don't know. I mean, like, what you going to do? Let me see what, what, let me see what Angie say. You still owe Uncle Sam back since he gets to add it to your, uh, what you earn. Okay. Yeah. You're you going to be taxed. No doubt. You, you're going to be taxed. So I said, yeah, you're going to be taxed and we ain't going to trip about taxes. You know what I'm saying? We already, we already know the game. This is now it's a shell game. So they ain't going to be tripping with that because they don't never, right. They don't never give without getting. It ain't what it ain't charity. The government ain't never been charity. So we already know that part. You're going to be taxed on it. But my question is, what are you going to do with the money? That's what I want to see. I mean, put it in the chat. Like, man, I'm going to buy it. Just what you going to do with it? That's all. I'm, I'm going to let that marinate. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to leave that there. So people put stuff in. Boom. I, I'll share some of the stuff that people are getting. You'll be able to see it in the, you know, in the screen and everything. So, um, hey, what's happening, Brenda Collier? I uh, appreciate you joining. Gladys. But, um, so that's question number one. What, what are you going to do with the money? It's $2 trillion going into the economy. Into the economy. So what are you going to do with the money? What are you going to do with the money? I mean, and we family on the Daily Bread. These are all breadheads, so don't, don't be bashful. Say, I'm going to purchase the essentials for my children and me and help out my eight siblings. Bam. Great answer. Loved it. Humanitarian. Loved it. Uh, placing in my savings, not spending. Brenda, Brenda said she's going to save it. Bam. Okay. So we're going we gonna to say uh, we humanitarian, and then we're going to put some in savings. So I'm going to jump on to something else. And as people keep throwing stuff in, we'll keep talking about it. But just get out some thought. Just let that marinate. This is the thinking show. Now, here's the other thing about the $2 trillion. Here's the second question. Right, that I had about the two, because I mean, a lot of times when I come do my show, I mean, we're going to do some teaching, but at the same time, I think it needs to be conversational because um, John Hope Bryant, I mean, John Hope Bryant is doing his thing. It's probably about five of, I'm going to say, I'm going to just say five. Oh, no, I'm going to go big. Ten. It's probably ten other African Americans that's out there doing what I do. Probably ten, right? I love all of them, top to bottom. Got their books, Kelvin Boston, you know, uh, Dennis Kimbrough. I mean, all, I mean, whoever, whoever's doing, just appreciate it. I'm not talking about the motivational speaker. I'm talking about people who are dealing with financial literacy, right? Love them, you know. Dave Ramsey, okay, got it. Susie Orman, got it. You know, whoever else doing their thing, got it. If you're trying to help people understand this, got it. But here's the second question. Now, the first question was, what you going to do with the money? Second question is this. Two trillion dollars. Where? Now, I'm going to just show you how to just, you know, take the... If I take my glasses off, I can see, but I can't really see, see until I... When I put them on, I can really see. Now, I want you to watch this whole thing play out. April. They're going to put two trillion into the economy in April. Thanksgiving. Hopefully, we're done with the virus. We'll still be dealing with this hangover from the economy. Got it. But this Thanksgiving, 2020, I said $2 trillion put into the economy. In addition to everything else that's been brought and sold, stock market, GDP, everything, everywhere else that we've been making money. Let me ask you this question. Where, when Thanksgiving, when we sit down and have Thanksgiving dinner, where where do you think that two trillion dollars is going to be at? Two trillion dollars with a T. Two with a T. Two trillion. Where do you think that two trillion dollars is going to end up at? Where is it going to land? Because when you put money into the economy, it don't sit there. It's not. It's not static. It's dynamic. That's why they call it currency. It's it's going to flow, right? Some people call it flow. It's going to be moving. As soon as they as soon as they put it in the economy. It's going to be going different places. Some people say they're going to help out their family members. Some people are going to save it. But it's going to be $2 trillion collectively in the economy. Small businesses are going to get help. People with jobs are going to get help. Airline industry is going to get help. Some other industries are going to get help. You know, they're trying to make sure that the big boys don't get greased up. But my question is this. When we sit down and have Thanksgiving dinner this year, 2020, $2 trillion, where is it going to be? Where's the majority of that $2 trillion going to be at? I'm just asking questions tonight. 
Like where where is that? We talked about the what, and then now we're talking about where. Where is that tree? Where's the two trillion gonna be? Where's it gonna land? Right? Where's it gonna land at? And these are the type of questions you should be asking yourself so that way as you're participating in this chess game, because this is chess, this is not checkers, this is chess. This is high level, high level chess, high stakes chess. Okay? So the reason I do this show is so that way, if nothing else, when you leave, when you leave from this platform, whether you come on, jump off, come on, listen to somebody else, even the, and I'm gonna talk about this too, even the people who get you motivated. Oh, I love the motivational speech. I love there's some brothers out there. I'm not gonna name all the names, but people that get you like, oh, I'm ready. Ooh, yeah, I'm ooh. But one thing I can say about motivation, motivation to get you up. But you're going to need something else to keep you up. You're going to need knowledge. You're going to need knowledge. You're going to need knowledge. So in the daily bread, that's what we're giving out. We're giving out knowledge. Sometimes we're going to motivate you too. But sometimes in addition to just getting motivated, because motivating is, you know, it's like getting a good, you know what I'm saying? A good pep talk right before a big game. You got it in you. It's always been there. I'm bringing it out. Ah. But then... In times like this, when there's so much going on, you got to be like, you got to have a certain type of information where you can get out of it, right? Some people going to buy stock, right? Um, I don't know. Corporations, groceries, they say where it's going to end up. Corporations, groceries, I don't know where the money going to end up. And I'm going to just give you my philosophy on that in a minute. I'm going to leave that blank, right? So that's two questions. Um... But my thing about the daily bread, I want to create a, a separate genre, financial motivation, financial motivation. Anybody that knows me, I'm never going to be down, not for long. And what I mean by down, I'm talking about mentally. I'm not talking about no, you know, hey, I had a financial hit. Everybody going to have a financial hit, just like right now. Everything has been pressed down. But here's the difference. Here's the difference when, you, when you're dealing with something like this. It's a brother on here, Chris Holt. Super smart brother. Chris, put in, put in your company name, man, so I can tell people, man, they need to check you out. Super smart brother here. Um, and I talked to some other brothers who in the industry, you know, financial planners, you know, strategists, you know, business minds, whatever, right? But here's the thing. The reason I do this show, the reason I do this show the primary reason is this. A lot of times people think it's improve your credit, uh, improve your savings, um, teach you about budgets, yeah? Um, show you how to, you know, get debt eliminated, yeah? Talk about businesses, yeah? How to start a business, yeah? How to create additional income, yeah? Um, all of that's yeah, 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 yeah. But the primary, the reason I started this show three years ago the primary reason is this. What we going through right now, this, for this point in time, is why I do this show. This point in time, it's 330 million people in this country, right? The vast majority of them, 330, I'm talking about men, women, and children, are going to be affected. The kids out of school, they're affected. I'm concerned about that. Why? Cause we got a lot of kids that went no, they weren't, they already went reading on grade level. They was just getting ready to have a breakthrough. They weren't reading on, they was in the second grade, and they was reading on the kindergarten level. They was on the fifth grade, they was reading on the third grade level. You know, they just, they was just gonna have a breakthrough. Now you just gave them six months. They come back in August. I'm concerned. Everybody's gonna get passed to the next grade. I'm concerned that all of that time, these kids. Some of these kids, man, I, I mean, my heart go out to them because it's like, bro, they're going to be so far behind. Our kids, our kids. I, I, I mean, they ain't got to be my grandson or my granddaughter. I'm talking about their peer group too. I'm like, bro, that's six months of just, you know what I'm saying? Like do a worksheet and I'm going to FaceTime you. and oh, I sent you another worksheet to do. I watched my grandson and my granddaughter doing it. Bro, I'm like, hey, my grandson, I ain't going to brag on him. I do sit down. I say, bro, wait, where you work? I'm done. Oh, shoot, now you done. So everybody's gonna be affected. 
But the reason I do the show is this. When you get in times like this, you need to you need to know some strategies in order to come through this. One, be able to take advantage of the opportunity. Because this is going to be a huge, huge, huge opportunity. For the people that can see it, it's going to be a huge opportunity. And it's already started to reveal itself. So I'm not going to talk about the, the health part of it. The health part is the health part. I'm, I'm totally sympathetic about that. Empathetic too. I got a young daughter, 26 years old, right? Doing her thing. Front line, she can't be no more front line than that, right? She right out there. All those stories you hear about the ER and she in the ER, one of the busiest hospitals in the nation, let alone in Atlanta. She on the front line. So I can't, I mean, and I'm, I mean, I'm a nurse by trade. So I'm like, bro, I can't, I can't help but be sympathetic about that, right? But the health part is going to be the health part. I get that. But what I'm saying is, especially for us, I want people to understand and get ready for after we get over that bubble. After we get over that bubble, it's going to be a whole bunch of people. It's a whole bunch of it's going to be a whole bunch of opportunity for you. But if you don't if you don't have the skill set, and I'm going to give you some I'm going to give you some fact that's happening behind the scenes that I know nobody ain't been hearing about this, but this is what's going on behind the scenes. That's why I asked the question what are you gonna do with the money, and where's the two trillion going? Where's it gonna end up at? And I'm gonna tie all of this together so that way you see, like, oh, that's what he was talking about. So, the reason I do this show is so that way you can get the skill set to know how to deal with job loss, decreased wages, how it impacts your credit, how it impacts your savings. Because even though you have those things that come onto your like what I call coming to your radar, right? It's one thing for it to come onto your radar. Now you got millions of people in the same position. Millions of people that was making real good bread. You know, six figures, high six figures, this. Now the place closed. But here's the thing, what happens when your income go away. Now your income, now this is, this is a teachable moment. When you lose a job or you get furloughed, or your money decreases. It can happen like that. Like two weeks. We didn't see in like 30 days, right? People are like, man, I lost my job. I done got laid off. I'm... Okay, that goes away like that, right? Boom, no more income right now. But guess what? Don't go away like that. Debt. Debt. Car notes, credit cards, mortgages, Student loans, auto, I mean, auto insurance, utilities, that don't go nowhere. Nobody debt. Boom. So you, so now you've lost all your income, but you still got this debt. It's just, and that's what's beating people in the head is the debt. You like, God damn, you ain't, a lot of people not really, I guess I, I'm, let me put it to you this way. A lot of people are not so much tripping about the income not being there. What they really tripping about is like, I still got all this debt. Just they trying to, hey, I'm gonna pay my mortgage. I'm gonna pay my rent. I'm gonna pay this car. I'm, ooh, oh, I got kids in college. Ooh, ah. That's the part that people are really gonna have a hard time with after we get over the bubble, right? That's the part that people gonna have a hard time with. Flip side of that, it's some people, and they're not all, I'm not talking about all millionaires, multi-million, I'm not, I'm talking about people that's been working, that's this, that's real diligent, real prudent. It's affecting them too, but they got, they like, bro, I got a little bit of reserve. I got a little bit of reserve. I don't have a lot, right? We just gonna be transparent. But some people out there say, I got a little bit of reserve because when times was good, I was putting away a little bit of money. I was just putting away just a little bit. When times was good, meaning when you was just getting it, right? Business-wise, corporate-wise, whatever. You weren't balling out of control. You weren't doing all this. You was just putting a little bit, 
Assad. So that's number one, savings. And we've talked about this plenty of time on The Daily Bread. Savings, savings, savings is important. Sa even if it's just a little bit, pay yourself, pay yourself first. The first 10% come to you. Just a little bit. Just, ah, just that little bit. That's, that's the difference between panic, being panic stricken and just, I don't know about, I got enough for April. I don't know about May. Just put away a little bit while times are good. And now I know right now people are saying, man, I don't want to hear about that now. Okay. When you want to hear about it. I mean, this is a thinking show. This, this week is a thinking show. You know, I've been thinking about this all week, man. I was like, man, I'm concerned. Because I don't think a lot of people are equipped to deal with this type of economy. It's get, this economy, people talking about the stock market. Forget the stock market. 50% of the people in the country not even in the stock market. If you take away 401ks, you're probably like 80% of the people in the country not in the stock market. I mean, so don't talk, don't, don't get fixated on the stock market. Oh, it's going down. Why are you worrying about that if you ain't in the market? It's just, man, let that, that's full gaze. Just let that go. But, but in times like this, you gotta. You got to learn certain lessons and have certain, you got to have a certain skill set to be able to survive through this because we will get through it. But economically, economically, if you don't know how to play this game, man, you're going to get tore. You're going to get chewed up. I'm telling you from, I'm telling you, and I'm telling, I'm being as transparent as I can be. You're going to get chewed up, bro, because these people are not. They're not playing out here, man. This two trillion? Come on, man. That's a five-layer bean dip. Five layers. Five bean dip. That's what that is. That's just because they know, they know that the majority of the people in the US, they don't have a skill set to manage through this. They already know this. We ain't, we ain't telling them nothing they don't know. They know this. They say, man, they. 330 million people. If we shut, if everything got shut down and we got tight on everybody, shooting much. I'm talking about entertainers, athletes. Think about all the people who was making, you was making 50 million dollars, but ain't no checks coming through, bro. I, I'm talking about. I look, man. I used to watch ESPN like it wasn't nothing I saw. I turned to ESPN. It ain't. It didn't have nothing to broadcast. They have nothing to broadcast. So if you don't have the skill set, right? If you don't have the skill set, if you're not taking the time out while you got this additional time at home, people are like, man, I'm at home. I'm, I'm like, bro, if you at home, be studying. Like, man, pick up, man, have a book delivered to your house, call Amazon, something. Be studying. Because you're going to need, here, here's the thing. When you come out of this, I'm going to give y'all, this is fact, right? In the mortgage game, I do mortgages. You know, I help people get into houses. I do this financial literacy. I'm coaching. I'm, I'm watching stuff. Here's something, I'm, I'm, and this is a true story. Every morning, I get an email from uh, the Mortgage Banking Association, the MBA. Every morning. Now, you ain't heard this on CNN. You ain't heard this on MSNBC. You ain't heard this nowhere. I'm going I'm to give y'all some game that you ain't heard nowhere, that'll bring all of this, what I'm saying to you, is going to bring it full circle for you. When I say you have to develop the skill set to be able to manage through times like this. And not only you, here's the other thing. Not only you, I had a niece that I was just talking to early in the night. And I was breaking this stuff down to her. She was like, wow, I ain't think about it like that. I was like, I know, because in 2008, you lived through 2008, but you didn't participate because you was in college. You didn't participate. You remember it, but you didn't participate. Participating and being there, that's two different things. That's like being in the stands versus being in the field. You was there, but you weren't playing. You was in the stands. So here it is. Um, I get an email every morning. They tell us what the rates are, the interest rates, what the interest rates are. Now, it started about 10 days ago. I got an email. They was like, look, um, all of those investment loans, 
all of those people that want to buy investment property, you know, that money is drying up. We, we gonna, we're going to temporarily suspend lending on non-owner occupied. And you say, what's non-owner occupied? Just that property that you don't live in, rental property, you seen a little nice little rental property you want to buy? They said, no, we ain't, we ain't not lending on that. We're not doing that right now. We're going to suspend that. Okay. You said, okay. Last week, people coming to me, said, you know, people still, now people are still applying for mortgages. But here's the game, though. Didn't see it on CNN. Didn't hear it on MSNB. Heard this here. And I'm telling you fact. I'm not telling you no fool gays. I'm telling you facts. A week ago, Thursday, today's Thursday, a week ago, Thursday, I could do a mortgage on a house with a 580 credit score. Now, just let this, I want you to watch what's going on behind the scenes. 580 credit score. FHA. I could do the loan. 580. You can show you've been on your job two years. You got a little money saved. You got your three and a half percent down. Somebody can gift you. Somebody can help you. We can get you a down payment assistance program. Boom, bam. You in the house. 580. That was last Thursday. Last Thursday. Last Friday, I get an email. Open my email. They said, hey, check this out. Um... Check this out. Um, we're gonna raise the minimum, we're gonna raise the minimum credit score to 620. This was last Friday. I said, Woo. Oh, okay. 620. All right, that's all okay. That's gonna be different. That's you already know. I said, damn, that's gonna be different. Because all the people between 580 and 619, they out the game now. All right. I mean, one of the quickest ways to raise your credit score is decrease your utilization, right? So some of those people, I was still like, yeah, we can well, we can work that out. That ain't no big deal. That was last Friday. Going to the weekend, we come in Monday, get the email, the daily email. What does the daily email say now? Daily email says, look, um, we've been watching the markets, and we're going to raise it. We're going to raise the minimum and this is FHA, which is, you know, government back. We're going to raise the minimum credit score for a mortgage on an FHA loan, which is probably the cheapest type of loan. Because conventional, you can come in. Most people who get conventional got 5% down, 10% down, 15 20%. A lot of people don't want to go conventional because of the down payment requirements, right? I'm talking FHA, which is the majority of people are going to use unless they use a VA loan. So I read the email. The email says, we're raising it from 620 to 660. I said 660. 660. That's the minimum. I said, God, dog. <laughs> I'm like, man. I say 660. It's like, shoot. That was Monday. I said, God, dang, that's tight. Amy Rankin, hey, I appreciate you joining. Laurie, Rod Jackson, that's my boy. That's my boy. Uh, my inspiration there. But, um, so I said, damn, 660. So I'm turning off through, look, I'm doing old school. I'm turning off through channels. I'm like, why they ain't talking about this on MSNBC, CNN? I'm turning the channel. <laughs> Bro, I'm like, damn, they ain't talking about this nowhere. They just saying, oh, it's, the market's getting soft. The market's getting soft. I'm like, okay. I come in yesterday, the day Thursday. I come in yesterday. One of the biggest banks, I'm not going to name the name of the bank. I'm not going to, I'm just saying it's, it's, hey, forget, I was getting an email from the NBA at first, mortgage, <laughs> the Mortgage Bankers Association. I got an email directly from this big bank. This is a big bank, like, big bank. They sent the email out directly, like, Phew. and then it got forwarded to me, right? It said, look, <clears throat> For us, what we doing, and they dictate a lot of, not only the mortgages that they initiate, but they buy a lot of the mortgages, right? The service them. They're a servicer. I opened that email. That email said, we're raising our minimum credit limit to 680. 680. 680. 
for, you know, just temporarily until we figure out what's going on in the economy. I said 680. Last week it was 580. Now to get 100 points, 620 I was concerned. 660 I was like, ooh. 680, I'm like, that changes everything. That change, and you might be saying, what does that got to do with, you know, like my old girl said, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Okay. What that means is that five layer bean dip that I've been talking about the whole show. When you get to 680 on a minimum score and you're trying to buy a house, and when people say a house, a house is what? A house for most people is going to be their largest investment in their lifetime. A house, buying a house or buying property is, if not number one, the top two, one of, one of two ways for you to generate not just wealth, but generational wealth. Something that you can, something tangible that you could pass on to your kids. Now, if you're getting tapped out of that at 680, you say, what does that got to do with anything? That's why we do the show. I'm telling you, look, that's going to be the new currency. I said 680. Why is that important? They already knew this. They, this ain't new to them. They was like, oh, bro, we, we already know who this is going to affect. This is going to also affect the people who are going to be losing jobs and being got, or impacted by furloughs. So what's going to happen when you get furloughed and you lose a job? You're going to stop paying certain things. You're going to have to because it's, it's natural, right? Because your debt didn't go away. Your income went away. Your debt didn't go away. Your income went away. So now you got to play this chess game like who you're not going to pay, who going you know, to hit you with the 30-day late, and you ain't, you know, you're like, hey, you just got to do it. You got to deal with it. I mean, I've done it. I, I'm not telling you nothing. From no theory, I'm telling you for real. Like that's what you want. These are the type of decisions that you have to make during times like this, and it ain't nothing wrong with that. But what you need to know, how, what you need to know is this: when your credit is impacted, when your credit gets, you know, bruised a little bit because you're going through this, and everybody. The good thing about this type of stuff, every not everybody, because I would be absolute, not everybody. Millions of people will be going through it at the same time. So it would be some sympathy in there when you come out on the other side and your, your credit is a little bit bruised and you go in to get a loan or you want to buy this. And you're like, man, you, bro, you know how it is. We all been, oh, people will be like, Shh, bro, I know. You, you too? I'm like, yeah, me too. I'm like, oh, just like in 2008. 2008, it got to a point where it was so common, excuse me, it was so common to be talking. I could be talking to one of my partners or a friend or a colleague. People are saying, so, man, I'm walking away from that house. You be asking people what to do. Man, what should I, man, what? Man, psh, man get your stuff out of that house and walk away. It was just that simple, like, what? what? Man, walk away from that house, man. You'll be back and you get that foreclosure, man, you'll be back. But you'll get that stress off of you. You, you, I mean, you won't kill yourself. The same thing is going to happen with this. Depression is getting ready to increase to Man, it's going to go through the roof. Anxiety, panic attacks, stress-induced heart attacks. I got a friend on here. She's a physician. She, I mean, Dr. Francis Scott, she know. She know. That's why you see, I mean, even before all this come on, that's why you start seeing so many young people having got their strokes and cardiac arrest. That's the kind of stuff your grandmama used to have. My grandmama had a stroke. No, nah, it now nah, it's like my son friend, like how old is he? 32. Had a stroke? Had a heart attack? Stress. Uninterrupted stress is just like on you all the time. Man, it will it will bust literally, it will bust a blood vessel in your head, man. Stress. So what you gotta do is, I'm saying all that to say this. This thing that we dealing with. They already know how the game gonna go. So I'm gonna start giving you some answers, right? The $2 trillion that they get ready to put into the economy, right? When we sit down to have Thanksgiving dinner, which is gonna be, look what, a little over six months from now, they're gonna put the $2 trillion into the economy. Whew. By Thanksgiving, that 
two trillion dollars will go to the top 10 percent earners in the u.s and you might be like all two trillion of it with the exception of one exception with the exception of the people that are playing the game like the young lady was saying earlier i'm gonna save it but it ain't about the saving you got to put it to work you got to call a brother like this chris hope make a note of this y'all chris hope at first financial education centers of orlando google him first financial education centers of orlando google his brother First, I don't care where you stay at. We got people on here from North Carolina. I've seen people from Florida, Georgia, New York. I don't care your profession. I don't care what, I don't care. No, man, when I say reach out to this brother, this brother is solid. He understands the game. He understands how to, he understands how money work. A lot of people don't understand how money work. He understands how money work. And he has the confidence to share that with you. And what I mean by the confidence it ain't no fugazi. It ain't no, oh, yeah, 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 I know. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. Uh, and then you say, well, hey, man, well, what, what kind of position you in? Who, me? Oh, uh, like, oh, bro, you ain't, do, I mean, do you buy, do you buy, sell, do you, oh, I'll, this brother, I promise you, I promise you, I would not, hey, I would not co-sign for this brother if he wasn't solid. When I say solid, if he's solid enough for me to fool with, and I've been knowing him, since we was kids. But when I went back and me and him had a conversation, I'm telling you, y'all reach out and Google him. Chris Hope at First Financial Education Centers of Orlando. That's the type of person that you need to be having a relationship with, investing with. So when you get your check from the government, look for a brother like this and say, hey man, I don't want it for free. You could take these whatever. Let me give you $300 on whatever. Or let, let me let me get a consultation. Let me do something. Because here's the thing. If you don't invest, if you don't invest in learning more about how money works, you're gonna always, not only are you gonna be the entree, you, your kids, and your kids' kids gonna always be the entree. Somebody gonna be like, oh man, they don't, they don't know nothing. They're gonna be eating off of you. You call a brother like this, game changer. Game, I'm talking about game changer. Why is that important? Because they have the same type of they they have the same type of people that they learn from or they entrust with the income. Oh no, don't do that. Like, whew. but um, hey, Chris Holt at First Financial Education Centers of Orlando. Look that brother up, man. But um, you gonna have to learn. It's I mean in this during this time. You're going to have to learn the keys. You're going to have to learn. That $2 trillion is gone. All of them people, Trump, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, um, Jeff Bezos, uh, the guy that owns all them dealerships in your town, the person that owns all of them hotels, all that money, the people who own them shopping centers, all that money going right back to them. Unless, unless you take that money and you say, hey, I'm going to take this money and I'm going to put it to work. And you may say, oh, it ain't that amount, that amount, it ain't, it ain't about how much you get, it's about what you do with it. It ain't about how much you get, it's about what you do with it. That might be the little piece you need to, to put down a down payment. 680, a 680 credit score? Man, that's going to be hard, I mean, but here's the thing, we've been talking about credit for a long time on this show. Three years we've been talking about credit. People have been like, yeah, they laughing, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah, credit, woo, woo. But then when you need it, like now, bro, ain't nobody selling, I'm going to give you another one. Nobody's selling cars right now. All the dealerships close, right? All the, they not even manufacturing cars right now. Like, no cars are being made right now. Like, they ain't putting the wheel, none of that, just stop. They haven't even started to sell cars. They not even close to selling cars. All the dealerships are closed, right? They already talking about, they like, look, when we do start to sell cars again, we're going to be selling cars. Listen to this. But they didn't mention the credit score. They didn't mention that because they don't want to deter you. But here's the thing. This is what they said. People are going to be able to buy cars seven years. Listen to this deal. 
seven years, 0% interest. Seven years, 0% interest, first six months, no payments. Where they do that at? But that ain't going to be for the 580. That's going to be for somebody with some strong credit. So even if your credit not strong right now, guess what you could be doing? Getting it stronger. Learning the five components of a credit score. Payment history. Why well, I had a missed payment. I lost my job. I, okay, that's all of that's still good. You can still manage through that. It's still going to be a way for you to manage through this. So when you come out on the other side, boom, you could, you could keep it moving. And you're going to have to learn them. You're going to have to learn them keys. Now, we're, we're going to talk about them as the weeks progress because I think that's important because a lot of people that don't know how to play that game, they're going to get caught out. You know, it's like, no, why? I'm like, I'm, give, man, I give, I'm giving this away, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I think it's, it's, a, it's, uh, it's my duty. I guess that's a better way of putting it. I'm not going to give you all the backstory of that, but that's my duty. It's my duty to do this. So, um, what I would say, I would strongly encourage you while you got this extra time, while you in the house, while you got this extra whatever, you know, ain't no, it ain't no, you know, sports on, it ain't no going out to the club, it ain't no going out to no, it ain't, ain't nobody taking no trips. While you got this extra time and you in the house, guess what you should be doing? Bam, like, bam, here you go, look. Monetizing gentrification. TJ Lofton. Had this brother on a couple weeks ago. Just get you a book. It's like, oh, what's, what else can we read? Up. Oh. Tony Robbins. Money. Master the game. Like, oh, shoot. Oh. Seven steps to financial freedom. Oh, shoot. I, oh, I can get that. What else can we read? Ooh, here's the one. Financial intelligence. A manager's guide to knowing what really numbers, what the numbers really mean. Oh, I'm not strong in that. Oh, okay, I'll get that too. What else can we read? Ooh, here goes a good one. Multiple streams of income. Like, oh, shoot, I do need to. This tells you all about how you can start a business with no. Now, I always, look, y'all always let me get to the last five minutes of the show. Let me hit y'all with this. If you, And we've talked about this, too. If you have a business, if you have an EIN, make sure, make sure you go out to treasury.gov. Treasury.gov. And go out to SBA. Dot gov. And you may be saying, why? The reason is the disaster packages that they're offering, the economic relief, they got the SBA has programs that are unprecedented, right? Coronavirus, small business guidance, and loan resources. So you just click on learn more. They got the coronavirus. They got funding options. They got the guidance for businesses and employers. And it goes all the way down to people who are just a sole proprietor. Go to these websites, treasury.gov and go to the sba.gov. They're going to start dispersing money. Now, the money we were talking about earlier, that's automatic. They just like certain number of people going to get, you know, certain threshold at, you know, 75000 And if a household is under 150, they already got those. You don't have to do nothing. You just take your hands off the wheel on that. And they just going to dispense that. That's one type of money. This is a different, this is another source of money. So if you've been impacted, or if you have a business that's been impacted, or if you have employees, or if you have, or if you're an independent contractor, sole proprietor, as long as you got your business, go here. We all got time. We sitting at home. Read through this and see if you qualify for some of this money. Why is that, why is that important? That's important because if you end up qualifying for some of this money, right? They got five, one, two, three. They got four different programs. They got paycheck protection, right? So you can go in and see if you qualify for the paycheck protection program, right? Because the paycheck protection, that's gonna, and that's a grant. This money that you don't pay back if you use, if you use it for mortgage interest, rent or mortgage, payroll, right? So you got a business, boom, check and see if you qualify. Then you got the EIDL loan advance. This loan advance will provide up to $10,000. $10,000 of economic relief to businesses that are currently experiencing temporary difficulties. Okay, you got that. Now you got the SBA Express Bridge Loan. What's that for? That's for people that was already looking to get a SBA loan. They got an Express Bridge Loan that they're going to do. Fast track your stuff, right? Okay, and then they got the SBA 
debt relief. So you got to go out there. Same thing on treasury.gov. They're going to tell you the treasury and the SBA, they come together. They're trying to put some money out into the marketplace. But if you don't go and see if you qualify, if you don't go and fill out the information, that opportunity is just gone. Right? And that's what this 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 show, that's what this show is about. This ain't no entertainment. This is something when you leave, boom, you calling Chris Hope. Hey man, I heard about you on the Daily Bread. What's this about? You like, oh, Chris is gonna give it to you. This is what I do. He's in insurance, but more so in than insurance, he's into wealth building. So I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna give you the punchline. If you're really serious about it, call that brother, Google him, look his number up, first financial education centers of Atlanta. Um, turn up my volume. All right, we, baby, this about to end. So we're going to see if we think that's it. But uh, I appreciate the heads up, though. Um, and I mean, at this time, I, I mean, that's my whole thing. And, and just watch, watch what's going on. Get your credit straight. Get your credit straight. Don't, I mean, and don't get discouraged or beat yourself up or get depressed, I don't even use that word, or get depressed or down, like, oh, man, I ain't got no money, oh, man, I ain't got... No, it's hard. It's been hard for, I mean, I've had it hard. I've known people who've had it hard. You will get through this, but you will get through it better if you just keep your head. Keep God first, right? Just know that, like, hey, man, it's, I ain't never seen that like this. But the people that keep their head, keep their faith intact, right? Keep your head and keep your faith intact, just like, it's hard on everybody. So I make it, I'm like, if it's hard on everybody, I know I can compete in that. And what I mean by compete is just keeping your head about yourself, right? Not, you know, getting down, not putting your tail between your legs. Oh, man, what was me? You, it's, it's something that can, you can make something happen if you keep your mind going. If you keep believing, you keep the hope, you'll get to it. But make sure that you tap into these resources. Make sure you're taking advantage of things that you can take advantage of. And don't um don't give up. It's gonna be hard. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'll be hey, I would be remiss if I said, man, this ain't gonna be this gonna be hard. This gonna be hard. But guess what? If you do the things that I'm telling you to do, right? Study financial literacy, right? Reach out to some resources. Go to my website, JoaquinThompsonSenior.com. Go to the website, there's resources on there. There's things I'm talking about on there. We're gonna start doing some classes, we're gonna start doing webinars, all this other stuff. But in addition to that, books. Man, you can you can get a book for five dollars. It could it could make you a million. It can make you three hundred thousand. It can make you five thousand, right? But you gotta read. You gotta you know research. Use the internet, not just for social media and stuff. Use it and research. It's nothing that you want to know about. That's not YouTube. You can go to YouTube University. I mean, you can go in there and learn everything from how to fix a lawnmower to a refrigerator. They'll tell you stuff on there that you can do to, you know, make ends meet too. So make sure you make that your mission. Like, I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep doing what I need to do. And um, that's what it's going to be. Um, and keep in mind, like, that money that you get, don't blow it. Don't blow it. Talk to a brother like Chris. Talk to a financial person, somebody that understands money, not your partner, not your man. Just this, that. Take that money, no matter how little it is or how big it is, put that money to work. Put that money to work because if you don't change, if you don't change this, if you don't change this, ain't that going to change? If you listen to all these people, ah, it's going to be like, bro, I get it, you know? Um, and again, special shout out to all of the first responders, all of the doctors, all of the nurses, all of the healthcare, all of the police officers, everybody who's, you know, risking their lives so we can come on here and have this type of dialogue. So, you know, my hat, look, my hat literally, my hat goes off to them, man, because um, they doing something that a lot of people wouldn't do, a lot of people can't do, a lot of people are not willing to do, and they're doing it from the heart. They ain't, I mean, they ain't getting no raises and all that. They doing it from the heart, man. And the last thing I'm going to say to you, take this thing serious. Take it serious. Hey, take it serious. Like I came on with, put this on, you know what I'm saying, if need be. When you're going out, put your mask on. You know what I'm saying? Take this thing serious, man, because one thing, one thing I can tell you is this. If you ever get sick enough to end up needing to be on a vent, you'll never, 
ever forget that. That's something that you don't want to do. So protect yourself. Don't hey, don't listen to these people, man. Stay at home. Keep your, your family safe. You stay safe. Make sure that everybody around you stay safe. And don't play no games with this because I promise you, I promise you. And the thing that people don't realize is this. On a regular day in a hospital, I'm talking about regular, no corona, no flu, no. On a regular day, anybody that's on a vent is in trouble. Any person, anybody, that means you are critical. And they got thousands of people on a vent and you still going to go marching around. Man, I, people be coming to me. I'll be like, bro, I'll be like this. Yeah, let me get them eggs. People laughing. I'm like, whatever, bro. I don't want to be on no vent. And I'm a nurse. I know I don't want to. But you think they want to. Uh, mm -mm. I don't want to be on no vent. So if they say stay home, I'm trying my best. I do venture out, get a little grub. Or if I got to meet somebody, if you got to get a check or if you got to try to make some money, you got to do that. I mean, I'm not going to be no fool. But, um. But while I'm doing it, bruh, and I had the bandana, I'm going to leave y'all with this. I had the bandana for like two or three weeks before they even said that. Now they saying, hey, put something on your face, right? I don't have no N95 mask, but I got my bandana, and I keep this joint with me, so, and uh, and I ain't in L.A., thankfully, so I don't get no, you know what I'm saying, I don't get no, no flack or nothing about doing this. But this right here, this is safety. So uh, with that being said, if y'all want to do me a favor, make sure that you share this with somebody. Go out to the website. Make sure that you join the email list on the website, JoaquinThompsonSenior.com. The website is off the meter. Uh, make sure y'all check out Chris Holt. If you need something, here's something. I'm going to do another plug. If you know somebody that's graduating from high school, college, man, those are usually just life moments, right? But they still are going to commemorate that. Go out to design by jt.com design by jt.com hey he got some great graduation announcements you may have a niece a nephew a friend somebody that hey that wants to celebrate they're not going to be able to celebrate in a normal fashion but hey you can still get you a graduation announcement because here's the thing if you send out them graduation announcements guess what could come back money gifts this they, they still ain't turning that down it's a heartbreak that they can't walk across the stage i get it but graduation announcement, so make sure you go out to designbyjt.com. Check out all of the content there. Check out the graduation announcements. High school students, college students, PhDs, MDs, law degrees, all of that. We're doing all of that over because we're trying to, you know, we're trying to do what? Educate, motivate, elevate. So y'all have a great week. Be safe. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. Don't worry about it. Keep your head about to keep God first. Hey, man, play that song better, man, and that. Hey, I appreciate you. Hey, Tika, Michael, Tanya, I love you, girl. Wop, Pam, Chris, hey, routine. Angie, Junior, hey, Daryl Arden, I appreciate you, boy. Sent Newsom, I appreciate you, girl. Glenda, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Oh, man, got their teeth, bro. What? Oh my gosh, oh my, I must be doing something big. Hey boy, I appreciate your tea. Uh, Toya, hey girl, you, hey, you know you like my little niece. But y'all have a good week, man. Stay safe. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep your head up. You know what I'm saying? Keep your head up. It's going to be tough, but hey, just know, God, that's all you got to say. If it get tough, just say, God, help me. God, help me. Hey, y'all have a beautiful week. I'll be in touch with y'all next week. Same time, 8 to 9, every Thursday, the Daily Bread Radio Show.